beautiful people, this is Yoyebe Aix Nozi. Yoyebe means your girl in a Zimbabwean colloquial language. So it is your girl Aix Nozi, but you guys can call me Nozi. Let's get started with this video and let's talk about Gucci. So this video is broken down into four chapters. We start with introduction, where the brand started, where it's going, and lessons learned. Let's get in. So the introduction, Gucci. That's the introduction. We're done. <laughs> literally, literally, okay? <laughs> Gucci was founded by Guccio Gucci. Guccio Gucci was born in Florence, Italy in 1881, according to biography. Com. He worked as a bellhop in the Savoy Hotel in London. And he also worked for an upscale train travel company. I'm not too sure if he did other things as well in terms of his work experience, but these two specific experiences inspired him to actually start the brand Gucci. He opened his first store in 1921 as a luxury luggage brand in... Um, Italy, Florence. They offered, of course, luggage, accessories for luggage, and also leather goods for horsemen. So their business grew and they had many shops in many locations and countries. It was a family business, so he would run his business with his four sons. His four sons being Vasco, Aldo, Rodolfo, and Hugo. Hugo is Gucci's adopted stepson from his wife's previous relationship. So that is the second generation involved in Gucci's brand. There was like a lot of rivalry between the brothers and Gucci, and this rivalry actually led the Gucci family leaving the company. In 1953, Aldo Gucci opened the first store in America. And yes, you guessed it, in New York, New York, New York. Yes, ma'am, all right? At the Savoy Hotel on the 58th Street. East 58th Street. So remember Gucci or Gucci? He actually worked as a bellhop for the Savoy Hotel. And I think he did this in remembrance of his, you know, um, his experience, his work experience and where he actually um, got inspired to, you know, start the Gucci brand. So Gucci or Gucci then died 15 days later after the opening of the Gucci store in New York. The Gucci loafer with metal horse bit was created that year and in 1985 it would be displayed at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, becoming part of the permanent location. I'm going to continue reading from WWD because I think they give us a very clear um, timeline of how Gucci evolved as a brand during this time. And also just how um, the Gucci brand was just influencing the fashion world. In 1961, stores opened in London and Palm Beach and the bag that Jacqueline Kennedy was seen with was renamed the Jackie, which would be relaunched in 1999 in many colors and variations to great success, opening the era of of the Gucci it bag. In the early 60s, the Gigi logo was applied to canvas and used for bags, small leather goods, luggage, and the first pieces of clothing. In 1966, the Flora scarf print was designed for Princess Grace of Monaco. The pattern has become iconic for Gucci, revisited by creative directors Frida um, Giannini, I hope I said that properly, and most recently by Alessandro Michel in his um, area collection. In 1972, Gucci opened a store in Tokyo and Maurizio Gucci, Rodolfo's son, moved to New moved to New York to work with his uncle Aldo until 1982. Around this time, the brand hit its fashion stride. A store dedicated to clothing opened at 699 Fifth Avenue in New York, while 689 Fifth Avenue focused on shoes, bags, luggage, and accessories. Gucci's first fragrance was launched in 1975 and since would continue to be a stronghold for the company. From Gucci Guild and Flora by Gucci to Gucci by Gucci and Gucci Bloom. In 1981, Gucci showed Ready to Wear for the first time at the Sala Bianca 
And Obianca, hmm, I was like Bianca, okay, at the Sala Bianca in Florence, playing heavily on the flora print. If you guys would like to get to know more about the timeline of Gucci, I will definitely link this article in the show notes down in the description box down below, okay? So Rodolfo being one of Gucci's sons, he died in 1983, leaving his son, Maurizio, majority of Gucci's stake. Now, remember, Maurizio was working with Uncle Aldo in New York um, till 1982. And then in 1983, his father dies, right? And now he gets majority of the stake of the company. During that time, Uncle Aldo was leading the company as well. And he continued to lead the company. Maurizio is represented as the second generation in the movie House of Gucci. But he is actually the third generation, being the youngest person working in the Gucci um, business according to my research okay being the youngest all right <laughs> so Maurizio felt like Uncle Aldo was cheapening the brand with his mass production approach so he spent most of his uh, most of his time in the 1980s trying to push Uncle Aldo out of the company and it, it, it eventually worked it, it really did eventually work so remember like this tension in the family was publicized and Uncle Aldo was eventually arrested for tax evasion and Maurizio flew to Switzerland from allegations about him forging his father's signature so he can avoid paying heritage tax he was found guilty at first and then he was acquitted in 1989 Maurizio started to change the brand image of the company as depicted in the movie like Uncle Aldo was cheapening the brand basically and people were seeing that okay so he wanted to change the brand image so people could you know see it as a high fashion brand instead of it looking too cheap and this was depicted very clearly in the movie as well during this time he kept on you know, wasting a lot of money. I'd say wasting, but he kept on spending a lot of money to live his lavish lifestyle. So he was forced to sell 50% of the company to Invest Corp. Uncle Aldo was... Uh, uncle Aldo, can I call him that? I don't know. But anyways, let me just say Aldo, okay? He's not my uncle. <laughs> okay. Aldo was the last person to sell his shit to the company, but... I don't know because some articles say it was Aldo who was the last one and some articles say it was Maurizio who was the last to sell his share of the company so I have no cooking who was the last to share um, to actually sell their share of the company anyways let's just continue okay Maurizio called Dawn Mello who revived um, Bergdorf Goodman and obviously you guessed it Gucci she appointed Richard Lambertson, who was the head of accessories, who was the head of accessories department in Berg Bergdorf. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling to say this name, Bergdorf. Okay. And he was appointed to become the design director for Gucci. In 1990, then she appointed Tom Ford to become the design director for Gucci. The restructuring of management in Gucci was very difficult because of the market in the 90s. Consumers were still getting used to the fact that Gucci was going for a more sophisticated look and more sophisticated feel that they were going for and implementing in Gucci and then in 1983 Maurizio sold his shares to Investco and now the Gucci family does not have control over Gucci anymore they don't own Gucci anymore and the family is not involved in Gucci in 1994, Tom Ford was then appointed as the creative director. Remember, he was the he was the design director, and now he's the creative director. After Maurizio's ex-wife Patrizia found out, I, th I hope I said that properly. After she found out that Maurizio had actually sold his shares to Investcorp, she was, I guess, not too happy. I can't even say not too happy. She was mad. Okay, <laughs> seems like she was very mad, and she ordered a hitman to kill Maurizio in Milan in front of his office. He was actually shot four times in the movie. They make it seem he was shot three times. No, he was shot. He was shot four times. He passed away in 1995. 
yeah like there was just a lot of drama in the family when it came to the ownership of the business and this is just the beginning because oh, this is just the beginning not with the family we're gonna go we're gonna we're going to go somewhere with this one. <laughs> if you'd love to know the difference between the true story and the actual movie, The House of Gucci, I will just put a video on the screen right now where you guys can actually uh, um, get to know the difference and etc. If you'd love to know how all of this unraveled until Patrizia went to jail, then guys, please watch the movie. Please watch the movie, okay? Please, please watch the movie. Please watch The House of Gucci. It is so dramatic. It's so nice. I like it. Very entertaining. I did not know Lady Gaga could act like that. First of all, like, wow, she killed it. Like, I didn't even know it was her. I was just like, wow, Lady Gaga should really consider just being an actress. <laughs> you know, like, she is amazing literally amazing she played patricia and she, honestly girl amazing she should she should get like an award for it or something like whew, it was too good it was so the reason why the film is slightly different to the true story is because the film was adapted from journalist Sarah Gay Forden's 2001 non-fiction book with the same name, which chronicalized the sensational real-life story of the fabulous wealthy Gucci family's rise and fall as one of the fashion's most prominent dynasties one of the screenwriters roberto said i also wanted with this to feel like the audience was watching a movie he tells time i didn't want it to feel like it was in any way a near realistic or sort of kitchen sink drama i really wanted to feel heightened and really bold and operatic and it really was like that if you want to read more of this i'll put it in the description box down below in the show notes in the same year that Maurizio died in 1995, the Gucci brand then became public in the New York and Amsterdam exchange stock market. While Tom Ford was of course the creative director and Domenico De Salle being the CEO. The company started to attract Hollywood A-listers and they were in competition with LVMH, Mouet, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton. So you think the drama ends here? No. The company started to fight for Gucci. A few years later, Prada buys 9.5% of Gucci and then LVMH buys 34.4% of Gucci shares. LVMH actually wanted to take over Gucci. I'm sure you're asking yourself, like, what do you mean? LVMH bought Prada as well girl so gucci basically accused lvmh for what they were doing and yep lvmh was being smart hey they were being smart like mm. they were being very smart <laughs> i spoke about how huge lvmh is in the kenneth isaiah video so if you want to get to know more of that you guys can watch the kenneth isaiah and i'll definitely put it in the cards here the two companies lvmh and gucci battled it out in the dutch courts and ppr save gucci basically <laughs> but ppr then took over they decided to own they bought gucci all of gucci and they are currently known as caring they used to be called ppr now they're called caring they have full control of gucci now and this was official on the 10th of september 2001 gucci is now legally called gucci group and guess why you're right they own a lot of brands as well okay they own a lot of brands they have bought alexander mcqueen saint laurent bottega balenciaga butcheron i hope i said that probably if i didn't i'm so sorry okay i'm very very sorry stella mccartney and bedat i hope i said that properly they should, i think maybe there might be more companies but yeah those are the companies that i've been able to list eventually in 2004 Tom Ford and Domenico De Salle left the company. Because there was just a lot of tension with management and creative independence, etc. Et I'm not gonna get into detail with that, but there was there was tension. With regards to the changes of management in Gucci, you guys can read this article by Luisa Zungani. I hope I said that properly. If I didn't, I'm so sorry. I think it's Zagani, sorry, Zagani in WWD. I'll definitely put that link in the show notes in the description box. 
In April 2021, Alessandro Michel represented his Aria collection, referencing back to Gucci's signature collections. He is the current creative director and is honestly doing a great job at that. There is an article um, by Vogue talking about him. They had an interview with him, so I'll definitely link that down below in the show notes. So Gucci has obviously evolved over the years and we can see that with their collections and obviously just the brand. They just want to be a luxury fashion brand and they're doing very well very very well i believe when it comes to just that luxe feel in their brand it's very high end even though they do have a complicated history in fashion with regards to gucci's recent you know collections i feel like they're just so dramatic like the runways and the way they style the models they're just so dramatic and i love it i like it because i feel like they're just like referencing back to gucci's you know brand story <laughs> which is that that they have a very dramatic history like it's super super dramatic so i i like i like the fact that it's like that because they're just saying hey like we bring the drama baby we bring the drama <laughs> you literally never know what's coming with them literally it's just a very smart fun and clever brand i believe when it just comes to the brand story it's the drama honey and we all want it literally we all want it <laughs> in terms of like the the ownership like everybody wants it the companies want it the family wants it <laughs> Everybody wants it. So the reason why I say this is because if you guys watch the Winter Fall 2019 collection, um, like the runway and the clothes that they have, the runway, yeah, the runway, right? Dude, like the models literally, some of the models that she have like tears, like dramatic tears on their faces. And I'm like, that's so dramatic. I like it. Wow. <laughs> and obviously reading about their history and watching the House of Gucci, it's like, yo, I get the pun. I get the pun. <laughs> companies were fighting for this brand the tension the crying it must have been a lot a lot of tears were shed for this brand you know anyways side note the pieces from the 2019 winter fall collection was super super amazing i oh i loved every single part of it like it was the pieces were just honestly beautiful the style was just top notch literally the way they styled the clothes on the model oh so i also went to watch the 2024 winter collection and oh my gosh like i didn't even realize this at first so basically it starts with like the behind the behind the scenes of what's happening and i was like okay cool that's dope like i really love it and then i all of a sudden realized that they're actually showcasing the clothes like I don't know how to explain it. Let me just explain it, all right? So basically, there's like a... There's something rotating on the stage, like a circle rotating. And the models are actually behind this like window glass. And they're actually just standing there while the, while the stage rotates. And they're showing you the clothes just like that. And the cool thing about it is that what is happening in the center of the actual circle on the stage is that they're actually dressing up the models they're doing the makeup they're putting clothes on them so the audience can see what's happening behind the scenes and they can also see the models um that are behind the gloss like on the stage like i don't know how to explain it but i'm just show but <laughs> so cool so so cool so amazing like i'm like boom mind blown whoever came up with that idea was very very smart very smart because you actually think about these clothes being at the store and they basically and it honestly whets your appetite to actually go buy those clothes so a very smart psychological marketing idea mm. very smart i see you i see you <laughs> It was a whole production and obviously at the end the models then come off and actually do like a normal walk around the actual um stage i don't know how to explain it guys i'm just gonna show you guys it was really dope <laughs> So I can go on and talk about their fashion shows, etc, etc, but I think I'll just need another video for that, if you guys want that, and yeah. First of all, do not involve your family in your business. <laughs> 
I think that was, that's like so obvious. Like don't involve family. Just don't. But honestly speaking, like I think don't involve too much family in the business. I personally think that Maurizio made a very good decision in changing the brand image of Gucci. I just wish that they weren't in debt. <laughs> I just wish they weren't in debt because I believe he had a very impactful vision for Gucci. It's just very unfortunate that they had to sell everything. <laughs> that is sell it. I think Gucci had the potential to actually show the world the power of actually having a family brand and just the importance of family and how much of a gift it is and that family fashion brands can actually go really really far i feel like we live in a time where um, we're seeing different interpretations so fashion designers are giving us different interpretations of a brand and i see we see that with gucci because gucci's had i think they've had a number of changes in terms of creative directors and we see how they have different interpretations of the gucci brand and how they they have a different view which honestly shows you that there's no limit to creativity and this is why i actually love fashion brands or fashion companies that are like this because first they put an emphasis on business profitability is important like how are you gonna run a business without profits right and then also or oh, profits or oh, money okay just money in general okay <laughs> And also just highlighting different talents in the world. I think it's really nice to know that, yeah, there are fashion designers that want to work under their own brand name. That's all. And they're very okay with that. And I feel like it is good because it hits close to home. Like it, it feels close to home and it's exclusive. It gives that exclusive feel. And I agree with that. But I, th I think it's important that you really need to ask yourself, if you're going to start a fashion brand, do you see it still existing in the next 50 years? So now you have to think about your successes. You have to not just be creative, and I think I've emphasized this a lot in so many of my videos, but you also have to be business-minded in the fashion industry. Okay, Gucci is a phenomenal brand, and I think it's evolved to something way more magical than it started as. There's a lot of romance when it comes to Gucci's collection, and I think it's a bit of a... It, it refers back to, I think, Patrizia's, Patrizia and Maurizio's relationship a little bit, and how... You know, it was all about love, I believe, at first, and then it just turned into something else. I don't know a lot about their relationship. I don't think it's none of my business, to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I really like, yeah, Gucci's been doing well. <laughs> I think they've been doing well in terms of just like um, their cl the clothes that they that they're making. I'm sure that we can also see that Gucci has always used the power of influence that celebrities have. Um, so, you know, they always make sure that a celebrity is wearing their brand and obviously the celebrity if they really like gucci they're obviously gonna wear their brand anyways because they like it and it's pretty cool and it's beautiful and it's amazing and then gucci knows how to make a statement okay they just know how to make a statement and i think it's just a very good blueprint it's a very nice blueprint it's a very good tip to give um brands that are growing that hey like you know go for the celebrities go for people who actually have an influence um on society to wear your clothes and designs that's how you grow <laughs> so yeah that is the end of the video and i hope you guys enjoyed it if you found it interesting please give this video a like comment and also share this video oh yeah please also don't forget to subscribe if you've reached the end you might as well okay <laughs> you're here and i'll see you guys in my next video bye I know that I don't make things clear